start today's video. I just want to thank everybody that's been subscribing. Appreciate all the support. And what we're going to do today is we're going to put some gears in this thing. Got an 8.8 .8 inch ring gear, rear end. And what you're going to want to do first, you want to pull your wheels off and your drums off. And we're going to jump under here and show you what to do next. Start pulling this thing apart. You're going to want to remove these 10 bolts to hold your diff cover on. Over the, last, over the last couple of days, I've been driving this thing back and forth to work. Really impressed with the shift kit. Wished I had done that years and years ago. If you didn't see the part one of the build where we did the shift kit, you might go back and look at it. Definitely, definitely money well spent. Turn this thing into a whole different vehicle. You want to pry this off, probably got RTV Deluxe on there. Oh, don't look too bad for a quarter million miles. Once you get that off, you don't want to take a 6.516 and pull this bolt out of the center pin. You don't want to remove this little bolt that holds this center pin in. It's a 5 sixteenths. I use a 6 point just so it don't try to round it off and then you're kind of stuck. I'm not even going to lie, I've been in that situation before. What you're going to want to do is you're going to get that center pin out of there so you can push your axles in and get your C-clips out of there. This one might take some persuasion. Once you get that pin pulled out, kind of roll it to the bottom, and then uh, you see in there where the pin starts coming out, you got your axles in there. Just pull that pin out far enough, you can slide them axles in. And then uh, push the axles in. I like to get a magnet and just reach in there, grab them C-clips. I'm gonna pull that axle, I think fell. Pull that axle up. Uh, yeah, this C-clip's been stubborn. Sometimes the magnet won't cut it. I press the axle again. I know my fingers. Mm. 
So I just gotta try to use a flathead. Um, that's how you get your axes out by doing that. Next step is, is you're gonna want to mark these caps. These caps here. I mean, I usually go ahead and just set them on each the side that they come off of, but you're gonna want to mark them anyways, just in case. And then uh, you can pull these four bolts, and then your center section just falls out. And then when we'll get to removing the draw shaft after that, or we can uh, get the yoke off and get our pinion knocked out. Now all you gotta do is pull this carrier out. You should have your spacer. And your spacer to get your backlash. your pinion set in there. We'll get that knocked out here in a little bit. I'm actually going to pull this ring out. I'm trying to get this uh, tone reluctor ring or yeah this tone ring off of here. This is how your speedometer reads on one of these. So we're going to get this uh, ring gear knocked off and hopefully get this knocked off to put on our other carrier. And what I did to get that ring gear off, since I'm not reusing any of this, I just started like one thread on a bolt and just nailed it with a hammer. Now these uh, rings are supposedly pressed on, but what we're going to do, we're going to try to tap it off. It'll tap off towards the ring gear side because they have a little tab. So you can't pry them off the other way. They have to come off the ring gear side. I've heard that you're supposed to heat these a little to get them to fall off, but we're just going to give it a little taparation. So much there for some heat. Now we're gonna see if we can get that ring on our new setup. So here's our new carrier from AAM. It's just a stock replacement kind of limited slip posi unit. I've never really seen one like this. All the ones I've seen, they got a spring in here. But this one doesn't have anything, but it does have the clutches. I'm not real sure how these work, but we're going to see if we can get that tone ring to slap back on this one. It does have the little notch that the factory one had. Well, as you can see, we got it on a new carrier. We didn't use any special tools, but we needed about six different hands to do it. But what we did is, I know you're not supposed to, but we just put the ring on there. Put the ring gear on there and then started sucking that ring gear up with the bolts until we got it sucked all the way up on there and uh we're gonna pull the bolts back out lock tight them and put them back in and then uh this part should be ready to go back inside the rear end and then we're gonna jump down there and get the the carrier 
or the carrier, the pinion pulled out. And then we'll set the new pinion in there and we'll get this thing back together. Once you unbolt your draw shaft, it's four 12 millimeter bolts. And you're gonna wanna take your pinion nut, take it off, and after that you can pull your yoke off and then you can just pull your pinion out. Once you get your pinion pulled out, go ahead and start knocking your races out. Still going? Yeah, but hit the top. It's starting to get in the bottom. Yeah, that's what I was saying. the back one I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the front one and then we're gonna install the new ones when you get the front seal knocked out and the front race is this little oil slinger don't forget to put this back on when you put it back together we got both of ours knocked out now we're about to knock the new ones in That's all you do with that. You just draw them back home. After we get them in, we'll go ahead and grab the pinion. Set it up in here. Here's the different sizes in your pinion. That's the size comparison. I'm going from a 355 to a 456. And what we do next, after we get the races in, we go ahead and put the bearing in, the oil slinger, and then we knock the seal in. What we like to do is put a little silicone around the outside of that, just to make extra sure nothing leaks. And on this new pinion, I got a 25,000 sham underneath this bearing. I just kind of guessed, because the last few reruns I've done, was anywhere from 24 thousandths to 26 thousandths but generally what you want to do is go ahead and press off your old bearing or cut it off and get this shim and put it underneath your new bearing but uh, Ford actually recommends to start at a 30 thousand shim and work your way from there and then that requires get another bearing and die ground the inside I don't want to go through all that, so I just put 25,000 shim. Hopefully, it's close. If not, I'll have to press this one back off and change it. But that's how we're gonna go. We're gonna get this pinion thrown up in there. Make sure before you throw it in there, put your crush sleeve on.
once you get it in there, just go ahead and put your yolk back on. Start your nut. And what I generally do is I just tighten the pinion nut with the impact till you get all your slack out, all your in play. And then I just tighten it a little more till I feel a little drag on this pinion. And then that's just where I set mine. I don't use the inch pound torque wrench at all. What's happening now is it's starting to crush that crush sleeve while it's getting so hard. I'm gonna let the compressor pump up and try it again. Use a jack to try to crush this crush sleeve. Pretty sure there's about a million things that go wrong here, but. Looks like that breakover got a pretty good band in it. I think the breakover is in it. You know. Whatever it is, it's bending. It's not hitting me. Making any more pressure on it. Well, you have a break over when it's said and done or not? Uh, I'm not going to have a break over if it's going to break it. It's alright. I got another one. Are you? Yeah. I get either. I want to see if it's going to break. This no, one? I want to see the Chinese shit break. Oh, it's going to break. <laughs> I feel it already. Okay. Oh, yeah, it broke. It broke? Yeah, I, well, I guess it loosened up slack over here. So. Oh, look how much. Okay, let's take it apart and try it. Nah, I didn't tighten it any, though. Yeah, it did. Did it? Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> so, what gave? What gave? Yeah, what gave? Uh, huh? Oh, this thing ain't broken. Well, we got to figure this part out. We got a, a punch all crammed up in here with a jack handle trying to keep this thing from turning. Well, now that we've done some sketchy stuff trying to get this pinion preloaded, we're going to stab this center section in there. I don't know what it is about the crush sleeves on a 8.8, .8, but I definitely like the crush sleeves on the 10 bolt 8.5 Chevrolet a lot better. Is it gonna whoop you? Is it gonna whoop you? Maybe so. Be sure to pinch a few thousand fingers. It don't fit. It doesn't look like it is. It don't fit. Oh, it fits just snugly in here. Snug as a bed, but it's right there. Well, we're going to figure out our shims and then we'll get back with you. Well, we got her back in there. I actually used the same shims that the factory had. And uh, we're about to check the pattern, but it seems like the backlash is pretty good. I like it anyways. We're going to get some compound on here and check this pattern. Well, we got our pattern where we like it. Use the stock shims. It's 
to get the, the backlash that we liked. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, pull this cross pin and get our axles put back in. There she is, all torqued down, put back together. Axles, center cross pin all put in. We'll get the cover put on, get this thing filled up with oil, and go see what a difference we got. <laughs> 